Hi, my name's Becca and I was going to quickly do a rundown of how I've made the custom claws for my Wild Liger Kodobukiya version of him. Um, let's uh, move on to how, uh, why, what, what did I do? So I made some new claws for him. Why did I do that? Well, as you can see, for some reason, when Kodobukiya decided to make uh, the Wild Liger, they changed how his claws claws look. I don't know why, in the anime his claws are really cool, in the games they're cool, just for this model, I don't know, they just made him really, <clears throat> really thin, flat, fingery, I'm not sure, I don't like it. Anyway, so, I decided I'd make my own, um, since I have a 3D printer, and I wasn't satisfied, so obviously first you do is you take the reference pictures, everything is needs to fit in precisely, we're talking about Kodobukiya article model kit, so the holes need to be the right size, the pegs need to be the right size, otherwise it's just not going to fit in everywhere, because these kits are very precise. Um, I didn't actually record the whole process of me modelling it because I didn't think I needed to at the time. I wouldn't, but anyway, I, it didn't took about 30 minutes, I think, at most. It wasn't a very complicated uh, thing to model. And you can see the, the parts I made. Um, it went through a couple of iterations, um, but this is actually an old one. This isn't the one I printed. I did print, obviously did print it, but then I made changes as I went. So then I go from my workflow is Maya, ZBrush, and then supports and tutor box and slicing and tutor box. I'm lazy, so I throw it in ZBrush to dynamess it, so I don't have to join it all up. Um, but you can use whatever you want, like, also modeling software, I use Maya, but you can use Blender, or you can do it straight in ZBrush, or you can use SketchUp or CAD. Honestly, it doesn't matter what software you make your part in. This is a quick rundown of Box. There's a million and one tutorials out there about how to set up your supports. Um, I just copied them off of someone, I can't remember who it was. I had a lot of troubles to get my printer to print properly, but it ended up not being the supports, it ended up being the levelling. I use Elegoo ABS like grey resin for these settings. So um, 8 second per layer and then 80 for the base layers. All of these numbers are online. If you every type of resin uses different settings as well, so if you have ABS grey Eligu, then you, you can use these same curing times but only for the photon the other half of my claws were done on my mono x and they are completely different s settings um completely different type of machine so these settings wouldn't work for the mono x these settings only work for the photon but yeah i'm going to be doing a different video about the mono X because I have a lot to say about that machine, but uh, that's not what this video is about. Ah, uh, yeah, and here's a little time lapse video of my Mono X printing. I thought it'd be a bit more entertaining, but yeah, it's an hour long print. It's not really going to get very high, so you're never going to really see any progression. You're just going to see it, the build plate go up and down, and then ta da, it's done. I uh, went outside, cured, uh, cleaned it, hypersonic resonator. If you don't clean it properly as I found in one of my times the holes are filled and cure and uh, they're unusable so cleaning is important and then obviously curing it you can use UV light you can use sunlight oh I think it was night time so I I used my uh, nail hardened machine I don't know what it's called and then obviously you got to remove the supports uh, you can remove them before you cure but I found that this is just easier in the end. I found using hot water and ripping them off was just a lot more messy. An extra step I didn't really want to do. Though it is satisfying to rip the supports off. You, what you do is you dip it in hot water and then you rip the supports. But uh, with such small finicky ones, it's a risk that I'd rip the, the peg off 
if I do a big print then I'd probably yeah take the supports off before I cured because it's a bit easier especially if there's big lumps of supports and then you just obviously the supports are I, I don't think there's any use for them so they just get tossed in the bin Oop. and then you got your nice thing and then obviously you got to clean it because I just trimmed the supports off I didn't actually clean the whole pe little pegs off and it's a little bit of a it's very therapeutic this whole process so ignore my uh, ugly fingernails I was painting my wild liger I thought I'd just do some airbrushing without my gloves on and uh, it's not a good idea um oh yeah I was gonna I was gonna record myself priming the pieces outside but I realized I just took a picture instead of actually pressing the record so that's all you got it's not a very special thing it's, it's pretty basic anyway um I chose not to airbrush the claws this time even though that's what I did last time it was super fiddly um I thought I'd just and I, I found that just brushing the paint on would be a lot easier I'm using Tamiya gold leaf I think and I'm diluting it with some paint thinner I uh, if you want to know the brands of specifics leave a comment and I can try and let you guys know but yeah now it's just the process of painting and then now you got to mount them I've already done two sets of these before this so I know they fit perfectly and but it's still a little bit finicky so you're gonna watch me struggle to stick the final piece in which even on the base set claws it comes with the the thing that holds it all together is finicky on that as well uh, excuse also my, again my terrible looking fingers it, it's, it's just gold paint I promise um, yeah it's not finick it fits it's just the it needs to go in the holes and also clip on to the little clips and also I'm trying to record at the same time and hold it in view and it, it would have been a lot easier if but anyway it's done look perfect fits perfect fixed either glove and they all move perfectly a little bit stiff but that's what you want and yeah looks great I love it because I hate myself I was doing some panel lining I guess you could say where I'm just highlighting the little divots you would say what they are I spent like hours panel well, I say hours probably an hour panel lining all the armor that I haven't shown off yet uh, I didn't paint it I just panel lined it I still got half of it to do it's, it's a very tedious thing private panel lining is probably the thing I least like this whole process but it it's you need to do it I guess is what I'm gonna say and now I'm varnishing it uh, yeah hashtag ruined am I right uh, you're thinking no why am I painting this goop but it's gonna dry completely clear I recommend varnishing things any any three print there we go all nice and clear gone and yeah, I'm just going to show off the claws a bit more. But by now, it's with the whole process is kind of done. I think I varnish them again a second time just to try and protect it a bit more. I thought I'd show off uh, some of the leftovers, I guess you could say. Um, the misprints. Well... Well, they're not misprints. Well, some of them are. Like that giant one, though, is just me trying to scale out. The first print I did was just. Uh, I find 3D printers are very awkward to get the scale correct sometimes. Like, you think it looks the right size on the build plate and in your ch in cheetah box, but then when you print it, it's a different size. But no, I found out that actually uh, each square on my cutting board is actually one-to-one -to, -one to the squares on Chidu box so I saw that the claws are exactly 20 millimeters long so I just had to scale it to be 20 milli millimeters um, 
So the grey ones are the ones done on the photon, the white ones are done on the mono X. Uh, these are ones that my dad took off the printer bed and didn't tell me that he didn't clean, so then I went and cured them and there was resin inside the holes, which meant they were unusable because I can't obviously use them if the hole is closed so the peg won't go in it. But it's not the end of the world, it's just an hour print, it just means I had to print them again. But uh, the quality on the Mono X is definitely a lot sharper than the Photon. The white resin is awful, I hate it, but it's the only resin we've managed to get to work on the f on the Mono X. At the moment I couldn't get the grey to work, I don't know why I couldn't get the right settings. I guess I think if I try it again now that I know more, but you can see how the design changed ever so slightly. I think the, the final version was version 4, where I had to thin down the base slightly, as you can see where the connector is, just so that they would fit in together slightly better and increase the size of the claw, like the height of it. And the peg wasn't the right size when I did the very first version, which is, the th I think that's what you saw in the 3D model I showed. But, all in all, they, I think I succeeded at all, almost instantly. Anyway, um, that's my little journey through making a custom part for my Wild Liger. I think maybe I went into too much detail on the painting and prepping side, but showing you that straight off the printer, they're not usable. You need to actually, especially with the white resin, I hate the white resin, you can't see any detail on it, so you always have to kind of prime it anyway if you want to print, if you want to paint your prints. But I all know I'm very happy with how they turned out, I'm very happy with my photon. Uh, not particularly happy with my mono X, but that's that's more of a me issue than the printer. Though they could have made it a little bit more user friendly. Uh, I'm just going to ramble on now if I don't stop myself. So thanks for watching.